Hi, everyone, and we're back to the Neil Haley Show here on the Caregiver Dave Celebrity Segment. I'm excited to welcome program Caregiver Dave and Sandy. Dave, how are you? What's going on? Hey, how you doing? Just got back from a wild, wild weekend. Yeah, tell us a little about that wild weekend, and we'll get to our guest. All right. We, um, we spent the uh, day at the U.S. Army Fort Irwin, built by General Patton, and it was we played war games all day long. We had some VIP special invitations, and who's going to turn that down? The chance to shoot 50 caliber machine guns and sniper rifles, and, and it was amazing. It was really amazing. And then the next day, uh, we had a Halloween party. I went as, uh, as Donald Trump, made my face orange, put a, a yellow wig on, and uh, put white around my eyes. Had a great time doing that. And then the third day, uh, hung out with Dog the Bounty Hunter and his brand new wife, shooting pool. It was, it was a great, great weekend. So it sounds fantastic. And our guest today, I guess we're going to talk, you know, about military and someone that I guess has been, been, been misunderstood in so many ways. And that's Benedict Arnold. And our guest <laughs> today is Thomas Mercer, the producer of Benedict Arnold, Hero Betrayed Tomorrow. How are you, Thomas? And thanks for stopping by. Hello, I'm fine. And I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. So let's kind of just jump specifically enough. You have you, to tell me about your background because this is not your first time in producing directing, right? 10 years ago, you did this, right? Exactly. Uh, 10 years ago, I was the uh, writer and director of Uncivil Liberties, uh, a political thriller. That was fiction, uh, actually turning out to be uh, mostly true now all these years later. Uh, but um, this is uh, the first documentary I've been involved in. I'm, the prince, I'm a writer and the producer, uh, working with uh, a director and another uh, producer and writer. Awesome. All right, Dave, uh, go ahead with your first question. Well, I'm curious. Um, you mentioned before the show that some of us think that Benedict Arnold is a hero. So please give me your opinion of the hero, Benedict Arnold. How's that? Well, um, I'm not going to deny that uh, he did return his loyalty to the crown, but um, the main- As he was obligated to do, right? Well, so were all of them uh, at that time. Uh, all the rebels uh, were uh, really uh, still subjects of the king until the war really played out. But um, the part of Benedict Arnold's story that we focus on is the early part of his career in the, in the Revolutionary uh, War. In 1775, 1776, and 1777, he was an ardent patriot. He had joined this cause with high ideals and high hopes for an egalitarian society where a person would be recognized for their achievement and their contribution, not by the happenstance of birth. Uh, Benedict Arnold was an opposer of arbitrary power. Uh, and we'll go into, in our film, we go into some of the psychology of uh, what made him that way, his child experiences and the family he grew up in and so on. Uh, but um, the point I'm trying to make now is that in 1775, Benedict Arnold, along with Ethan Allen, captured the important Fort Ticonderoga on Lake Champlain. Uh, which would have been a British stronghold in the event they would try to crack the rebellion from the north out of Canada. And later in 1775, uh, under George Washington's directive, he invaded uh, Canada, uh, laid siege to the city of Montreal, and for lack of backup, uh, he could have captured the, uh, the capital of, uh, of that province. And in uh, 1776, he mounted uh, really America's first Navy and defended uh, against an overwhelming naval armada coming out of Canada and sailing down Lake Champlain, <clears throat> fighting uh, till the last timber was blown up on his boats um, and stopped that British invasion cold for the year, letting, in fact, uh, George Washington continue his engagement further south and indeed cross the Delaware River. And then in 1777, Benedict Arnold 
stop the British at Saratoga. Uh, he's clearly the force that def what, uh, caused the first major defeat of the British army on the continent. Now, um, wow. so, I didn't know any of that. that see, that's all, and that's why, that, is that why the documentary happened, Thomas? For those reasons that people misunderstand, stood uh, Benedict Arnold, some of the amazing things he did. We wanted to tell the untold part of his story. Everybody knows the, uh, the treason part. Um, we don't gloss over it, we deal with that. But uh, by the time we get to that part of the story, you really will begin to understand his motives and what he'd been through and why he would come to the conclusion that the country would be better off governed under the leadership of um, the king and uh, parliament as opposed to the alternative, which he thought was a rabble and an uncontrolled mob of uh, rebellious and uh, unpredictable um, uh, radical patriots. <clears throat> Where did he get that idea that they were a rabble and unpredictable patriots? He got that idea, it built gradually, but uh, it really came into sharp focus when um, following his uh, very serious wounding <clears throat> at the Battle of Saratoga, he could no longer be a battlefield commander. Hmm. Interesting. And then so, General Washington put him in charge of uh, the military, uh, gov became military governor of the city of Philadelphia. And that city had until then been occupied by the British. And when the British pulled out, they weren't defeated or thrown out, they just had a change in strategy. Uh, it left a really ruthlessly divided city. About one third of the population were patriots about a third were neutral and about a third were loyalists. And when the British pulled out, the radical patriots came to power and really unleashed a reign of terror against the neutrals, mostly Quakers, and the, um, uh, the loyalists. They were uh, burning their property, hanging them from trees, really? uh, confiscating their houses. Uh, it, it was uh, bedlam. And into that mess, uh, Benedict Arnold comes and he brings order to that. And uh, in the process, doesn't make any friends among the radical patriots. He really puts an end to all their, their fun and uh, is perceived, starting to be perceived as somebody who has loyalist leanings when in fact he was really only trying to be um, doing what he was assigned to do, bring order to the city. At one point, he, he's uh, in, in a house and there's an angry mob outside um, coming after him personally. Wow. So this is all very interesting stuff for sure. How much did you learn from this documentary that you did not know, Thomas? Well, I had known um, a good deal about his heroics at the Battle of Saratoga because I'm originally from Saratoga Springs and, and I grew up uh, with that in my blood. But um, uh, the more I got into the story, the more I realized about the um, other major contributions he made before that, particularly um, the invasion of uh, Quebec. And uh, I started to understand all the things that were going on in his life and around him that uh, revealed how he came to a conclusion that the country would be better off, better served under British rule, returned to the crown. And those are things that I hadn't fully appreciated. And uh, we really wanted to communicate that in this film. You know, uh, would you say that there are some similarities between Benedict Arnold and uh... Who was the president of the Confederacy? Uh, Jefferson Davis. Jefferson, Jefferson Davis. Um, how would you compare or contrast those two men as far as you know, being called a hero or being called a, a, a traitor? Because Jefferson Davis was, was in the military, graduated from West Point, I believe, and was a fine, uh, fine general. Well, one of the big differences is that Jefferson Davis... Um, became the leader of a rebellion, uh, 
at a time when we really did have a country and a constitution. Mm. He had sworn an oath to uphold the constitution when he uh, became um, a general in the American army. And um, that contrast with Benedict Arnold, uh, who at the time was a subject of the king and was in rebellion against um, the king, the country, of the United States did not exist. It had been declared, but it did not exist. There was no constitution. He had not sworn an oath to uphold. So that's a clear difference between the two situations. Mm. Um, uh, I don't, I'm not an expert on Jefferson Davis's um, uh, psychology or all of his motivations. So I really can't compare that part of it but just on the face of it, the leaders of the Confederacy really um, can be seen as more uh, traitorous to the United States than you really can um, uh, see in Benedict Arnold. Yeah, but he wasn't treated as a traitor, was he? He wasn't executed or? Uh, well, Jefferson Davis wasn't, and neither was Benedict Arnold, although if he had been if he hadn't gotten away, they certainly would have. Yeah. yeah. Well, like uh, Franklin said uh, when he signed the Declaration of Independence, we're either going to hang together or we're going to hang separately. <laughs> yes. I like that. <laughs> so what, based on the documentary, now you, you, you had a lot of knowledge of Benedict Arnold. What is one fun fact that will make people start thinking, wow, I never knew this about him. You mentioned a lot of things, but is there one like, this, especially for somebody that might not have a, only has the knowledge of what's in the history books? Well, um, I think probably the most important fact um, would be just what kind of a heroic um, uh, man he was at the Battle of Saratoga. The, uh, the chips were really down. The Americans were on the retreat and Benedict Arnold disobeys orders of his commander, General Gates, and rides onto the field of battle, organizes the retreating men into a, a charge against all odds, against a major British redoubt and breaks through and leads his men around behind that redoubt and rolls up uh, a, uh, a huge number of uh, British soldiers and they ultimately have to surrender. Uh, that's an extreme act of heroism. Not to, not to say there aren't many more, this is really an action adventure uh, story to be told, but I think pe people will, will consider that a gem and uh, I'm really proud of the way we handle that uh, visually. Um, I'm sure there were other loyalists who, uh, after the war, uh, returned to England like Benedict Arnold did. Uh, are there any that are um, just as famous or less famous uh, that we know of? No, um, he was by far the most famous, which really is why they made such a big deal about him. Uh, he was beloved by his, uh, the troops who served under him mm. and uh, had a really great reputation um, as a leader of men, as, a, as a, 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 um, an idealist and uh, really somebody that, to look up. He had to be turned into a villain. Washington and the other leaders realized that others would follow if we didn't turn him into um, a, a, a terrible uh, villain. <clears throat> and that's what began the, um, well, I guess you could call the cancel. Uh, he was being canceled. Uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, there was a smear campaign against him. I see. How did you, how did, tell us about putting together the documentary. How long did it take and what was that process? Because a lot of documentaries, you know, they have different strategies and, and implementations to have it come to final product. Well, 
This is a cinematic documentary in that it's kind of a hybrid. Um, you think of documentaries um, of the past when you don't have any stock footage uh, to rely on or um, contemporary documentaries where you can actually go to the place you're talking about. When you're doing an historic documentary, typically what, all, all you have is historians talking at you and some um, um, little kind of illustrative scenes of flags waving and feet marching in mud. We really wanted to recreate the feel and the texture of the time. So what we had to set, what we set about doing is recreating these battles with literally cast of thousand uh, reenactors and recreating these naval battles on uh, Lake Champlain with real tall ships and state-of-the-art special effects to bring that to life. So while we have 12 uh, leading historians of the American Revolution in our documentary telling the story, we also show what's happening, what, what they're talking about with big, big visuals. Now to accomplish that, uh, our little company, Talon Films, uh, went way out on a limb and we bit off a, a huge bite. Um, so our challenges were many. We were underfunded and understaffed and just had to use spit and bailing wire and chewing gum to tie it together many times. Um, you ask how long it took? It took us 20 years, truly an act of dedication oh, wow. and love by our three principal uh, partners uh, who embarked on this as a, a life's mission. And uh, I mentioned the, the director, Chris Stearns, and uh, the other producer, Anthony uh, Vertucci. So you were getting pushback on the very topic uh, about a documentary about Benedict Arnold. You would think that people would say that that sounds interesting. Uh, I think, I think people would watch it, but uh, in in essence, you were having trouble finding supporters and funding for it. Yes, we were having that was a huge challenge. Why finding, do you think? Why do you think the pushback? Um, uh, well, <clears throat> um, if you are an institution uh, associated with any sense of trust, pharmaceuticals, banking, um, insurance, the kind of um, institutions and foundations that underwrite big documentaries, do you want your name associated with the greatest, the no, most notorious trader in American history? So. That was a hard sell. We did get some foundation funding. We did get some philanthropic funding. We did get some funding from um, uh, or organizations in, interested in promoting tourism of um, the upstate New York region. But um, uh, we also incurred a lot of debt. So those were, those were clearly challenges. Um, but uh, you're gonna run into challenges um, whenever you're dealing with ships and uh, big muddy fields and rainstorms that come when you don't expect them, um, you're gonna deal with, uh, uh, well, uh, one time we were on, um, on location on Lake Champlain um, doing filming the background plates and um, the, uh, cruiser we had uh, um, uh, arranged for had, had uh, leased a captain and his crew um, ran into serious difficulties and uh, we were adrift. The engine failed and uh, the, the ship, very sizable cabin cruiser, was adrift floating towards a cliff um, where it would have been battered and sunk and we had to be rescued by the U.S. Coast Guard. 
I would I would think that your biggest pushback was from the U.S. Army that they would not want uh, to be portrayed in a light where they disparaged a, a hero and called him a traitor. What is that true? Well, um, we had. Um, they didn't. I can't dare. say we had any official contact with the United States Army. However, uh, we had. Um, uh, history professors from West Point, uh, as part of our team of historians, um, who um, have military history credentials that are impeccable. And um, uh, we filmed at West Point, um, the locations, establishing the location. We filmed uh, in the chapel where um, the uh, various previous commanders are memorialized with plaques. And uh, there's one for Benedict Arnold there. Uh, however, his name. Yeah, I saw that when I was it. at West Point. Did you, did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. His name's uh, not on it. I think I think if 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 it happened today, uh, we can compare him to Edward Snowden. Some people think he's a hero. Some people think he's a traitor. Yeah. Um, I think there are some examples like that in today's world. And you, it really raises the question of, uh, it is much in the eyes of the beholder, um, whether you're a traitor or, or not, you know? It's, it's kind one, of, side, uh, one some, side versus the other side, right? Thomas, it's, yeah. it's, that's pretty much for this. All right, so Dave, the, fin the final question before we find how we can watch the film that would, again, it will be released next week is Dave is gonna ask his caregiving question. So go ahead, Dave. Well, I've been a caregiver for 25 years. Uh, I've been married 47 years. In, in the middle of our marriage, my wife has a headache, turns into a stroke, becomes paralyzed one side, loses her speech. And through a grieving period that was a couple of years and was really bad, we managed to uh, pull through. And so now I'm Dave, the caregiver's caregiver. I, I have written books. I've spoken all across the country. I've uh, spoken on stages and on television stations. And I'm just trying to help caregivers stay alive because 30% of them actually die before their loved ones do. And I made a lot of mistakes. I'm trying to teach people the mistakes that I made so they don't make them. But more than that, I'm trying to help people who are not even caregivers, because I believe eventually everyone's going to either become a caregiver or need a caregiver. And now's the time to actually uh, prepare for being one and not have it take you by surprise like I did. Have, have you considered uh, caregiving? Uh, has it happened to you? Do you know? Um, are you worried about it? Um, well, that is a very... Um very uh, direct and to the heart question. Um, and I'll answer it uh, likewise. Uh, I have uh, pulmonary fibrosis okay. and I will not uh, in all likelihood outlive my wife. Mm. I'm doing okay now. Um, it's not anything I'm uh, imminently faced with, but uh, we have had discussions. We know what the future holds. Um, it's a disabling disease. And uh, she's prepared um, to give and I'm prepared to receive. Wow. All right. So that's, that's the part of the process of caregiving is that all of us have to be prepared. We just never know when that's going to happen. Yeah. And go to caregiverdave.com for more information. Thomas, where can we connect? Where's the best place to watch the film and stuff? Where can we go? It's releasing uh, next week on many different streaming platforms. Uh, so what I'm going to suggest is that anyone who's interested in finding it to go to our website, which is Benedict, Ar Ar Benedict Arnold Hero Betrayed. That's the title of the movie, Benedict Arnold Hero Betrayed.com. And at our website, you'll find a list of all the uh, streaming platforms and cable TV outlets where you'll be able to find the film on demand. And it's already out, yes? Uh, it's trickling out. It's not up on all the platforms. It will be. All right. Okay. 
thanks again, Thomas. And thanks again, Dave. And a really good show. I learned a lot about Benedict Arnold and now I get to screen the film. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'll have to reach out to you, Thomas, after watching it. But I appreciate you guys both stopping by. I would hope you do reach out to me after you watch it. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again, Thomas. Appreciate it, Dave. All right, guys, that was the Caregiver Dave Celebrity segment. Take care.